Hi, this is Maya with Rico. Today we're going over the folder browser in Relativity. A folder is the graphical representation of the organization of the documents stored in your database, and it's similar to your My Documents folder on your local computer. Um, generally speaking, the folder structure is static through the life of the matter, and it's not used to control workflows or represent your tagging and coding. Um, instead, these workflows are controlled using review batches or maybe saved searches, um, and your tagging and coding is reflected in the field tree. So here's the folder browser, and you can show or hide the folders by clicking the icon at the top here, the Collapse Browser Panel. You can also do that for the Save Searches window. And this gives you all the real estate for your document list. If you want to bring those back, you click the icons in blue at the top, Expand Search Panel, Expand Browser Panel, and those bring back your browser. So you can see here that we are organizing documents um, in this folder structure by um, data source. We can show or hide the folders by clicking on the plus and minus icons. And we can get pretty granular on the folder structure. Here you can see our custodians. They're either stored just in the root folder of the custodian, or we can have a full um, folder structure of how this person stored their records on their local computer. One thing to keep in mind about this folder structure is it's going to reflect the deduplicated um, documents in your data set. So if your documents are deduplicated globally, you'll need to use a field in the document list, the all custodians um, or the, the deduplicated folder path field, um, because this data set and the folder structure will just show you the deduplicated data set for that custodian. So for the data that was produced to us, you can see we have an incoming productions folder. This data is um, organized by source and then by volume. Um, when we click on these subfolders, I'm sure you've already noticed, the document list changes. So this is going to show us everything that is selected in the plaintiff folder. Um, an even better example is this third party folder here. We have both these two volumes show up in our list, but if we select just the individual volume, we get 721 documents um, in our list. Our entire database for perspective is 84,000 records. Another way we can interact with these folders is by doing a filter for a specific volume name or a specific folder name. So I just did a filter for ABCD that returns anything with part of that name in the actual folder name. And that's super handy if you wanted to look for, you know, deleted items, there's Susan Bailey's deleted items folder. Or you could get individual custodians. Here we have two Susans quick way to navigate your folder browser. You can also use folders to interact with views and filters and searches. So if I needed to make a search for anything containing the word terminal, and I think I'll use the DT search for that one, you can see here that in the entire database, when I click on the root folder, we have 261 items. And this search, you can see, shows up in my search panel. And if I wanted to see if there were any hits in Susan Piera's data, looks like we have 18 records. So this search is sticky and will stick around when I click on different folders. So I can look at different subsets of data. Um, this also works. Um, same concept if I have a filter for any value within the database, I can navigate around in the same way. And the same holds true for views as well. 
So if, for instance, I wanted to look at everything that we've produced, um, I can see my production documents view. This returns anything with the base bag is set and it will be populated for documents in our custodians folder. So I can see that we have 5,000 items that were produced and I can filter down to the subset of records for each custodian to see who was produced, um, which custodians were produced with each set of data. Sometimes when you're searching and filtering and madly working on your data, um, you might click around and suddenly find that you don't have any documents in a folder. Um, the things to check for that is to make sure that you're in a view that returns all the documents and that you don't have a filter that is um, filtering out the documents from that folder. So you can always check this panel, check your filters up top, check your view, and when you click on the documents folder again, they will all show up. There are going to be times when you want to make a search for multiple folders. Um, to do that, you'll need to make a safe search. So, you know, you can click on one folder and then go down to the bottom here to the save as search panel. I'm sorry, the save as search button at the bottom of your document list. And when you click on that, you're able to actually create a saved search. And you can see here the selected folders. You can select more than one in your scope. And then you can add your searches, your keyword searches, your filters, and so forth here. And once you hit save, that's going to throw it into your saved searches browser. And you can access it that way. So in addition to filtering, searching, views, um, folders are great for some high level and even very granular reporting. So let's say somebody said to you, hey, how many third, doc third party documents have we received? We can pop into the folder, we can take a look at the document list and there's your answer right there. If you maybe needed to look at, um, you know, a specific set of file types. You could filter by, say, Excel, and you could make a financial review by selecting this specific subset of documents within any of your custodians data or, you know, anything that was produced to you. Very similar to this, to get a count of for instance, file types. Um, we can navigate to our whole database. We'll get rid of our filter. We can use a mass action here at the bottom called tally sum average. And this gives us a pop-up window that allows us to select a field such as file extension. And we can get a count of all of the file extensions within whatever folder we've selected. This also works for any document list, so you could be in the field tree, you could be in the saved searches. Same mass action works in all those locations. Some slightly more fancy reporting we have is in our dashboards. Here we have our dashboards that um, these are devices that hold reporting widgets. So when I click on the summary report, you can see I have some saved widgets that pop up and these widgets show me information about the documents. Custodian, we've got language, how many are duplicates. Here we've got the same um, native type reporting. And when I navigate across folders, you can see they automatically update based on whatever folder I'm looking at. And that gives us that high level reporting. We can use that to filter down to even more specific subsets of data and uh, really zo zero in on the documents we want to look at. So I'm just going to go back to our full list, clear out my filters, and I'm going to take an example of um, maybe making some deposition binders. Um, we could filter on a specific subset of records say anything that's responsive. And let's just look at uh, one of the custodians. 
this could perhaps be used to create deposition binders. Um, another mass action to utilize is the print save as PDF. So if we wanted to make a binder or a folder of all of these documents, we could save them as PDF. And then we could use the export to file feature to export this document list to use as an index at the beginning of our binder. So the export to file feature allows you to export to these different file types. You hit run and you get a little Excel document of all of the values in this document list. You can put that in front of your binder. And uh, that's a real quick way using folders to get at the data that you want to look at. So the last thing I wanted to show was how to secure records from a group of users in Relativity. So you can see here we've got our secured data folder and we have our top secret document. You can have many, many, many documents in folders. You can secure many folders. There's lots of other things that can be secured in Relativity views, layouts, fields, so forth. Um, but for this example, what I think I'll do is I will pause the video. I'm going to log in as a secured reviewer and let you see what it looks like when I am a reviewer and there are some documents uh, restricted for me. Okay, so I just logged in as a secured reviewer. You can say I'm previewing with those groups permissions. You can see there's been some other changes. We have fewer tabs. And here in our folder browser, we have our secured documents folder is missing. So as a reviewer, um, if, or if I were an expert or any other level of permissions, uh, a group that you'd want to secure, um, there's just no indication that those documents even exist. Um, you can navigate the folders. Um, you can do your saved searches. You can look at your you know, production documents, just the same as, you know, the last review group that we were looking at. Um, that folder is just missing. The only time that you would come into an issue is if someone tried to send that this user um, any of the secured documents, or you would also see a discrepancy if you were sharing saved searches across permissions groups. So the user group with the broader permissions would see more documents in a search that return secured documents than this group would. Um, but other than that, there's there would be no issues with um, you know, accessing the records as this reviewer would need to. So this video covered a lot of stuff. What is a folder? How is it used? How to organize and navigate the records to narrow the scope of a search or a filter or a view or to make a search or a filter, um, how to report using um, widgets and mass actions, and how to secure data from a group of users. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.